Okay, so I'm going to show how to open up and disassemble this HP model 15T-K100. Okay, so first what you want to do is remove the battery, of course. Um, let me show that real quick. So the battery will be in here, just like this. Okay, so to remove the battery, you just make sure this is slid to the unlock position and then push this one over to the middle as well. All right. Once you remove the battery, you want to remove all the screws from the bottom. So there are screws underneath these rubber caps and this plastic little piece. So to remove that, just get a thin tool and then pry it up or you can try and pry it out with your fingernails. Um, the adhesive is kind of stiff, so it'll take kind of a lot of force to take it out. But once you do that, you can see there's two screws under there. Okay, so this plastic piece will be over this hole like this. Um, Depending on how old or new the adhesive is, when you press on this, um, where the screw is towards this side, it should lift this up and then you can pop it out just like that. If you can't get it out like that, you can use like a needle or a razor blade or something just to get between the two layers and then pry it out, okay? All right, once you remove those, then you gotta take all the screws out. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. All right. Once you remove those 16 screws, you can slide the CD tray out just like this. Use your fingernail on this and then just pull in here. All right. And if it gets stuck, what you can do, so I got it out, but if it gets stuck, what you can do is you can get a, either a very small paper clip or a needle. Um, and then there's a little hole on the side here. So this, you can actually use the needle and then wiggle it around in there. Okay, and that should pop the CD drive out. Let's see first, oh, there we go. So there you go. And then once you do that, you can actually grab like the rails here. So as you see, when you move this, these rails stay still. So you can grab that and then you can kind of wiggle and pull it out. Okay, so that's another way if you can't get it out from this. Okay, so now that you got the CD drive out, you can see there's three more screws under here. You'll want to remove those as well. Let's see here. So most of these screws use um, a P1 or, or PH1 or J1 screwdriver. Um, I believe these you need to switch to a PH0 or J0. Make sure when you remove these that you have a lot of downward force so that the screwdriver doesn't skip out of the hole and then end up stripping the screws. Okay, so just remove those three screws. Once you get those three screws out, you'll want to remove these two plastic covers. So to remove those, just go where the hinges are and then um, lift up here, okay, just like that. And to put it back, you also have to put it at that angle, this side first, and then you can put it down, okay? So remove these two plastic covers, just like that. And then underneath, you'll have two more screws here. So remember to remove those two. Um, these two screws are the only different ones other than the three here, so make sure not to mix them up. Okay, so now that we got those out, all right, and then make sure you remove the two screws here. Um, then you can go and try and pop off this cover. So to pop off this cover, what you want to do is open it up. Um, and then as you can see here, there's a gap. So you get your fingernail between this gap and then you push on the back. So I'll show you here. So you can use pry tools if you don't have fingernails, but um, or you can just let your fingernails grow out before you attempt this, but get your front, your fingernails here underneath between that gap, and then with your thumb, push on it. So just like this. So you pull with your fingers, and then you push down with your thumb, and you just go all the way around, okay? So just like that. Sometimes it helps to pull this layer down while you're doing that, okay? Just like this. Okay. Let me see here. So then we can open this up. Oops, let me show you stuff that you're not supposed to be looking at on there. But um, yeah, so lift that up and then just pry this, go all the way around. Okay, keep going around. The hardest part to remove is this area back here. So sometimes you might have to use the pry tool here to pull that out. 
but um, go around and get the front areas first, okay? Just like this. Okay, stuck pretty strongly. And be careful when you're prying it open because there are cables on the other side here. So you don't want to pop it open too quickly and then um, you can accidentally damage those cables. So just be careful with that. Okay, am I missing the screw? Oops, there's a screw still there, no wonder why. Thought I took them all out, okay. So yeah, make sure you get all the screws. Okay, one, two, three. Okay, so make sure you got all the screws out. I missed one, that's why it was having problems coming out. Okay, so now that you got all the screws, you should be able to pop this open. Okay, it feels like they must have spilled something. That adhesive is not supposed to come up with the whole board. I think they spilled something on this. Okay, so while you have it open like this, you can undo the cables here. So, I don't know if you can actually see. So let me see if I can show you now. Okay, so here you can see there's a little cable here. So you'll want to lift this latch up just like that and then the cable can pop out. Same thing with these two. Um, flip this little latch and flip this latch and then you can get these cables out, okay? So that's how you remove that. And then there's one more for the power button down here. Flip that latch and then pull that cable out. Okay, so, oh, there's one more for the, sorry, the keyboard backlight. So flip that latch and then remove that as well. All right, should be it. So here you can see there is the keyboard backlight cable here. Then you got the um, trackpad cable, you got the keyboard, um, and then you got the uh, fingerprint sensor there. Okay, so those are all those cable connectors. Hopefully you saw them. Okay. So again, keyboard, fingerprint sensor, power button, and then trackpad. Um, so that's pretty much how you remove that panel. So if you need to change the keyboard, this part is like held in place with melted plastic. So if you want to change the keyboard, you're most likely going to want to replace the whole uh, top assembly like this. Okay, so um, now you can see the hard drive. So if you want to remove the hard drive, what you gotta do is flip this little latch up here and then pull this cable out so that way you can move it aside. Once you got that out, you can flip this little latch up and then you can undo the hard drive um, cable. You have to kind of lift it up while you pull it back because these wings will get caught. Okay, so once you get that out, you can lift up the back of the hard drive just like this and then you can take it out. So these aren't held in with screws. They just have little pegs holding them in place. Um, make sure you don't put them upside down or something. So when you put it, the shorter narrow side goes underneath here on the back, and then the front has these bigger little pegs, okay? So that's how you remove the hard drive. To remove this connector, um, just remove the little side things first. And then I like to use my fingernail and then pry this connector out like this. So you can see there's a gap now here. So if you can't pry that, what you can do is um, pull the connector slightly, be careful because this cable is delicate, and then between the little connector you'll see a gap and you can pry in there. So just go like that as you can see, and then now the whole connector comes out. All right, just like that. So that's the safest way that I found to do it. Um, if you can somehow get between here, this might be safer as well so if you don't use your fingernails because then you won't accidentally scrape these so you don't want to use a metal tool to pry this out um, fingernails work best but you can also pry from this side and that's safer okay there you go so the hard drives removed and then you can see this is the USB um, jack and the audio board here so if it's broken you can replace just that there's the CD um, uh, optical drive connector here so you can replace that just flip that up as well then you got the subwoofer here you got the left and right speakers connected here. These connectors, you just um, go between where the connector is. And then usually you just wiggle it while you're pulling it. So usually I have to use two fingernails like this and then kind of just wiggle it 
and just keep wiggling it. Don't use too much force or you can break something. So just keep wiggling it and it'll eventually pop out. So just keep going and there you go. So it just comes out just like that, all right? And you don't want to use too much force trying to get these connectors out. Just slowly wiggle it and keep pulling and wiggling and eventually it'll pop out just like that, okay? All right, I've seen a lot of people that bring their computers, they use too much force or they pry the wrong things and then they rip those out. Um, so the fan here, to take it out, you have to take this whole board out. The RAM is underneath this board. Um, maybe I'll take it out because this computer is having motherboard issues, so I'll just check if there's something weird under there since it's not working anyways. Okay, and usually when you remove the, um, the screen connector here, you want to hold the power button first. So that's one thing I forgot to mention for people that when they work on these computers, um, when you, if you want to mess with the, the screen cable, make sure that after you take out the battery and all the power that you, um, disconnect or you hold the power button for about 20, 30 seconds just to be safe. Okay. So here's the screen cable. So you just flip up this little latch and then you can pull this out just like this. Okay. Kind of have to lift it up slightly because the little wings get caught on the little connectors there. Okay, it looks like the charge port connector is underneath the motherboard, so you probably can remove it without taking out everything. There's one screw here holding this little uh, metal plate on top, so remove that, and then you can take this out. All right, and then you can reach the charge port. So just wiggle this, and you can kind of pull it up. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. And then the charge port, you can actually wiggle this out just like that, okay? All right, then you got the wireless card. Um, so one of the antennas already came up, but basically you just pull from the tail like this, and it'll pop it out. Don't pull for, pry from the front or you can damage it. Then take out this one screw. All right, once you get the screw out, it'll go up at an angle like this, and then you just wiggle it out like that. Okay, there you go. Then we'll see about taking the whole motherboard out. So there's a screw here. There's another screw down here. And another screw here. Okay. And then another screw, hopefully you can see, down in this corner here. This is marked like there should be a screw here, but there's no screw there. And then there's one screw down in this corner. And I think that's all the screws. Okay, once you get all those screws out, you can lift the board just like this. Okay, be careful. And then looks like it's getting caught here on something. So just be gentle with it. And there you go. And here you can see the whole board came out. And then you can access the RAM if you need to change the RAM. So the RAM here is DDR4 12800S. So PC4 12800S in case you need to change the RAM. All right. Since this one is having like motherboard issues, I'm going to try resetting the RAM or reseating the RAM. So a lot of people get annoyed when I do this kind of stuff. It actually cleans off the pins. And I haven't had any issues with RAM doing this kind of thing. So... Yeah, don't worry about it. Okay, then you got the CMOS battery. So to get that out, you push it to the side, into this side. So push it down, and then you can pop it up. Okay, so it has to slide past these little connectors here. And then I'm going to check the battery and see if it's holding enough charge. So let's use this. Okay, and then we will see here. Oops. Hmm. Not, oh, wrong setting. <laughs> okay, so check that. 3.03 .03 volts, so that should be fine. All right, so we're going to clear the BIOS or the CMOS by shorting these two. So I put one screwdriver on the top here and then one screwdriver or screwdriver bit there, and then I just touch the two together. Wait a few seconds, make sure to drain it out. Okay. 
do you see some weird lines and residue here so I think it actually is caused by liquid damage um, yeah I think there's liquid damage on this board so I don't know you can see some residue here so this board is probably fried but um yeah the CPU is um, soldered to the board so you can't replace that and then the video card also of course um, but that's pretty much all there is to this model. Um, I will try and clean this and see if it'll work, but it looks like this has some, I don't, where did I, here we go. So it looks like these little chips got burnt. So yeah. Um, and then this stuff is also kind of damaged. So hopefully this video helped you. If it did, please like, and subscribe because that'll help me. And thanks for watching. Um, basically, to put it all back together, you just put these little pieces back the same way you took them out. Put it in at an angle. Okay. I don't think there's a point for me to put this all back together because it's broken. But, um, yeah. Just slide this in. Put it at an angle like how you removed it. And then you can plop it back down. Okay. So, that's pretty much all there is to it. Uh, make sure you get all these cables out from underneath. You don't, uh, you want to make sure that you put it all back together. But yeah, again, hopefully this video helped. If it did, like and subscribe. And thanks for watching. Bye.